it was a crazy day in the stock market today. Um, the NASDAQ at one point was down 2%. And then it actually ended the day positive. Up six. So it was a, it was a very violent swing. Um, dropped heavy, then came back up. So what should... What do we make it? What do we make it? What happened today? Uh, you want to start? Yeah, everyone needs to stop panicking. If you were mm -hmm. at Invest Fest, I gave you the target. Even two weeks ago, I gave you the target. What to use? So when the market is dropping, that is the time. If you've been practicing and you've knocked out your three hundred practice trades by now, you should be able to hit 500, 600 points on Nasdaq and you know bring in a couple coins. Trading has considerable risk. Please consult your advisor. Please do not trade the futures market or any other markets if you're not um, liquid or solvent. But you, when these kind of moves happen violently to the downside, you have to be prepared. I mean, of course, we'll talk a lot more detail today, but I always say there's no such thing as a bad market, only bad entries into it. And if you're panicking, it's probably because you bought at the top of the market. Yeah, I, I said I had a few calls this week because uh, the last time we were on um, on January 3rd, the NASDAQ itself specifically was at 15,829 points. Mm -hmm. And um, at a, the low today, it was at 14,000. So we're talking about 14,555 to be exact. So we're talking about a 1,200 point swing. And so I told people, look, man, your seatbelt is on. We've seen this before, especially since we've been uh, doing Market Mondays. We've seen this happen in September 2020. We saw it happen in October 2020. We saw it happen in November 2020. We saw it happen in February 21. We saw it happen in March 21. And so we, we know and we should be prepared for these type of swings. The issue is that people are saying, all right, should I buy now? Should I buy now? And I'm glad that we talked about this on the, the lunchtime call. We were like, look, find companies, companies that are profitable. A lot of these companies that haven't made profit have had the harshest swings or drawdowns. Mm -hmm. Um, and so finding that information and, and I'm shout out to my, my dog Lawrence again for teaching that showing the, the, the community that you can find good companies at prices that are good to get in. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and that that's really the key. I hope everybody's paying attention to that. Look for companies that are profitable. We already know the mega cap companies that are profitable and we've been talking about those for a long time, but find some, some strong companies, right? Everybody's asking, what about Square? Is it a profitable company? Look at it. Look at look at the balance sheet. You get, everybody overcomplicates investing too much. Yeah. <laughs> and it really comes down to, like we talked about, patience. Um, if you wait for the price in which is best to buy, you won't have these. And I'm going to be honest. This is not even a hard pullback. So if you're panicking right now, whew, wait till April comes if they stop quantitative easing. Like, you have not got in the right spot. And that's why I'm so big on being big on prices please write this in chat the price of where you buy your investment matters more than anything this is not last year it's not last year quantitative easing is not there money is not just sloshing around and you can buy at any price for everybody last year who was like yo crypto is delivered from the actual stock market vanguard owns a bunch of that too i can't wait till that comes out all markets are tied together now we're just going to see a little bit of a change. And you saw it in Kathy's portfolio. Um, mm. And I'll, I'll ask Josh about that tonight, but I told you they were going to come for her. So Teladoc, the ones that we stated were no good, they're falling even further. Now we're going to go back to the companies that can print the most money, have good revenue, good top line revenue, good bottom line revenue. Those are going to be the ones that do incredibly well. Um, and lastly, whenever you're picking an investment, you can't all you can't think about the upside of it. You have to think what happens if this goes to hell in a handbasket. That's why I say two tech two index because the indexes have the banks and everything else and utilities and construction inside of them already. So if tech does take a dive, VOO and VTI will go up to the upside. So please be mindful. Yeah, and like you said, this is this is not a correction, right? By definition, a correction is a six to twenty percent drawdown on a market. And so like the NASDAQ was down, I think at the high was like at 5%. So we're not there yet. It's a pullback. It's a pullback, but that happens. And you almost, you almost kind of want it to happen, right? We know the trajectory of gravity, right? Anything that comes up must go down. We know that theoretically, but when we talk about stocks, we kind of forget that, right? We don't want it to continue to run. We need to have some correction. We need to have some pullback. We need to have some sell-offs. And so we can have that continued uptrend. Like you should- This is the equivalent of you guys selling a beach house because it rained hard for two hours. <laughs> now quiz time when's the last time the nasdaq had a negative year 
for everyone who's been doing homework. Take that in consideration. But once again, I do not want you guys to get tricked out of your spot worrying about short-term pullbacks. What you should is have your investment automated, leave it alone. And it's not that I don't want you to be rational or strategic in your buying, but the, I, man, I'm just going to be honest. The biggest thing and biggest mistake I see most people see, you keep tweaking your portfolio so much that you end up giving away all your gains. You buy the high, you get rid of it. Then I'm well, I'm going to buy at the bottom. The bottom come, you don't want it. Then we go back up. You're buying in the middle, comes down half a percent. I get out again. Now I'm going to go make an NFT. <laughs> next best option next best option <laughs> ian ian hate to hate the poop coin nft this the one okay listen i want y'all to make money so just because i may not like an asset and honestly like i don't have any skin in the game i don't sit on the board of any of these companies so i don't care where they go honestly but if i know that you're not going to make money from it i don't touch it and i know if it's gonna if i'm buying it and heavily Come on, I'm just, be mindful of that. You only need to follow one consistent strategy, and that's to buy the top four or five companies. And that's worked throughout time for the last two, 300 years. Do not deviate. But you guys keep deviating because you think, because that crystal ball is going bright behind me, man, it got to be something else that he holding back in that pineapple juice. That's the real secret. The real secret is that I don't take the stocks out of my portfolio, and I keep buying the same ones. Can you talk about what quantitative easing is for anybody that might be new that might not be familiar with what that is? Yes, a quantitative easing is the Federal Reserve pushing money in, in, into the market. So I made the analogy, I think last week, like when the MLB and Sammy Sosa and Barry Bonds was going crazy, hit 90 home runs a year and it was looking like a video game. It is financial steroids. So, and you, there's some people now who want to make the argument that the Fed is actually destroying our financial ecosystem. And I want to ask Josh, what does he think about that when he comes on? But they're putting out so much money into the market and made last year easy. Now we get to see, okay, now there's no more Valco, there's no more steroids. Let's see how many home runs you can get in the real environment. The, last year was simulation and quantitative easing picked up, of course, after 2008. And it was really Alan Greenspan's idea to push this form of quantitative easing. But it's really just flooding the market with money. And that's why everything was going up. NFT, real estate. I mean, uh, a G-Wagon that's 160, you'll sell for 325 now because so much money is flowing and people will pay over what the price of the value is. Um, no, I was going to say, and it's a shortage of everything too. Mm -hmm. They're using that supply and demand thing crazy. Like mm -hmm. I, I had a couch. It took 10 months for me to get my couch. And they said like Corona, there's no cars. You can't get a car right now. Um, oh. I was watching CNBC, I think CNBC today was like, they brought up a good point. Like the housing market, there's not enough houses. Yeah, We yeah. haven't, we haven't built enough houses. Yeah. That's another reason why the housing market is so crazy right now. Cause there's literally mm -hmm. not enough houses like for people to actually live in. That's why a lot of people are still living in apartments and renting things mm -hmm. of that nature. So everything, computer chips, there's, a, there's not enough of anything on the market right now. Yeah. I was, I was, I was, that was the conversation I was having, um, with tip. Just, he was just like, yeah, I'm in Atlanta. There's just not enough houses. And so that led to a conversation what you're talking about. Everybody's like, mm -hmm. oh, there's a scarcity. There's a scarcity. There's a scarcity. Hey, and Machida got to get back on new construction real quick. He's working. Yeah. Now he's working. Yeah. Yeah. He's working. yeah. Shout out to T.I. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, but, but even with that, you can control supply and demand. Like, even if I wanted to, I could be like, hey, I'm only going to accept five people in Stock Club for the next three years. What would the value of that be? There, They are manipulating the supply and demand to, of course, drive up those prices. And it won't be told for a long time about what the real cause of this financial calamity that we're going through right now is. But I will say people are getting all the cash that they can just in case disaster does strike. I don't think that it's accidental that the things that have been happening in the last two years um, have occurred. So... This is the part, though. This is the part you have to love. Um, if you, I tell you guys, my favorite book on investing, Money Master the Game. Um, one of my favorite quotes out of there that he got from Jim Rohn, if you love the summer and the spring, you have to appreciate the winners. Winners are when you build your base. And so here's a trick, because we all, because it sounds good, right? But when you're down like 14% of the day, it doesn't feel good. Literally, you need to trade 
excuse me, you need to long-term invest in an account that is automated and which you don't open. Like you just have to put your hand over your eyes and be like, dear Heavenly Father of Nazareth, please. I know I bought at the right, right, wrong price, but I promise the Lord, if this go up one time, right? And then give it three, 30, 30 days, 90 days, you will be good. Put, I wish I kept this stock in chat. If you sold something in 2010, 2012, 2016, 2017, and you would have been up 300, 400%. Yeah. Remember, remember, you are buying businesses. So when Xander tells people what I do, he does not say he runs Red Panda. Xander says he owns part of Apple. Yeah. You are buying a percentage in a business. Do not lose your spot. Yeah. And I feel like um, it almost feels like you almost sometimes kind of go through something to really appreciate it, right? Like what you're saying, like if I could put my hand in chat, I would. Like I had Apple mm -hmm. in 2007, I sold it, right? I'm just like, but, but I had to go through that. I had to experience that to watch this company Boy. completely take, like we're talking about 200%. Now we're talking like thousands in the percentage. But it was like, listen, you, had, you had to go through that to say, all right, that can't ever happen again. It won't ever happen again. Look, now I've learned from that. Man, my guy was rich when he told me um, and could have lost his job. He told me to get in the city when the stock split at 210. Uh, city now adjusted for prices at 66 bucks. Yeah. And yeah. who have I spent that little date money on with? Boy, she sure ain't around. I don't even remember who I was dating in 20, 2009. <whistles> oh, baby. That's why I tell you guys, like, when you go through those harsh, like, remember back in the day when you guys were watching on, on YouTube and, like, Jordan got beat up by the Pistons and that was the fuel that he needed to get to the next level? Those are your investor lessons. Like, yeah, you you're going to miss out on something. And then that that's what gave me my drive i'm like oh, i'll never miss another crash again so that's what i'm telling you guys it's not that hard of a pullback right now like we can see a hell of a lot worse and i'll give a couple prices for you guys tonight so you can be okay but just hold on hold on if you would not sell any of those uh residential properties that you guys have in new york okay. hey don't sell these companies because if so you'll be upset or i'll buy them off you I i'm happy to take them off your hands my graduates from my school being forbes Bag drop. Bag drop. <laughs> a mic drop. Bag drop. Bag drop.